So as you can see, this is gasoline, that is the water and ethanol mixed together. Welcome back to Lugmifa Classic and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing if you like these sort of videos on classic cars. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that is quite recent in the news or it's fresh in the news for a lot of countries in Europe. And if you guys over in the States, you might be wondering, well, what's, what's all the rage about? We've had ethanol fuel for a while. Yes, you have. You've had it longer than we have over here. We've had, in certain cases, ethanol-free fuel. We've had 5% ethanol in some fuels, and certain countries have already had 10% ethanol that you guys have over there. However, where I live, we just right now got 10% ethanol fuel, and it's all over the news, or not really the mainstream news, but it's all over all the car sites, and all car owners are talking about it. And I know that over in the UK, where I have a lot of my viewers, you guys are supposed to get it in September. I thought that we were supposed to get it in August over here. However, I went to uh, get some gasoline yesterday for my lawnmower and I saw that it's already E10. So I went and picked up a brand new, perfectly clean jerry can to get some E10 fuel so we can do a little bit of an experiment today. I want to see how much ethanol is actually in the fuel with a very, very simple experiment that you can do at home. So we're going to do that in a little bit over on the workbench. But before then, let's just talk a little bit about ethanol fuel. And I am by no means a um, petroleum engineer or anything like that. I just, you know, I've read some papers and I've understood a little bit about it and I thought to share my experiences with ethanol fuel. And the ethanol fuel I've experienced so far personally has been 5% ethanol fuel. So now we're gonna have twice as much ethanol in the fuel like we've had before. The one thing I do know uh, from E85 though is that ethanol is not as efficient or it doesn't have as much energy to put it simply as pure non-ethanol gasoline. So if you have a flexi fuel car which was quite popular from you know, Ford and Volvo a couple years ago, you can run them either on ethanol fuels so or E85 or you can run them on you know, regular gasoline or a mix of both. I know that when they statistically ran those on E85, they used quite a bit more fuel than if they ran on regular gasoline. But at that point, E85 was quite a lot cheaper than regular gas, so it still turned out to be a cheaper alternative to do that. However, in our classic cars, we're probably going to experience that they use more fuel than they did before. So if you're noticing that your fuel mileage is getting worse than before, Probably not that there's anything particularly wrong with your car, it's just that the gasoline is not as potent as it was before. Another thing about ethanol is, well, this is sort of a real big issue with it. It is hydroscopic. And you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? It basically means water loving. It attracts water and moisture to it. It's the opposite of hydrophobic. So you know when you have a newly waxed car and that first bit of rain that comes on it or when you wash it off with the hose, you get all those little dribbles on top? That's because wax is hydrophobic. It makes the water go away or it's you know, phobic. It has a fear of water. Hydroscopic does not. So it will attract moisture in the air, any water at all to it, and that will collect in the ethanol. And that's what we're going to see in the experiment later, basically how well it soaks up the water. And that is really bad in a car because you don't want any water in the fuel at all, mostly because water is not combustible. You don't want anything that's not combustible going into your engine. And you especially don't want water because that attracts rust. So it will sit in the bottom of your tank, the water and the gasoline and all the chemicals will be on top. So the ethanol and the water will be at the bottom, it will rot out the bottom of your fuel tank from the inside out. So even if it doesn't rot it out so it leaks, you'll still have rust particles going through your system. So that will clog up your fuel filter more quickly than otherwise. It might go up and clog up, you know, jets or things in your carbs up front. It might clog up your fuel injectors, just a lot of issues like that. Then you also have, you know, the water going through. So some water will go through. So if you have a car, for instance, like a classic car that will sit a lot, you will have maybe water sitting up in the front of the fuel system, making your injectors, you know, get stuck and other things like that. 
And the other thing about this sort of gasoline, it has a very short shelf life. I've been trying to do some research and find out exactly how short it is, but they say depending on where the gas is made in the world and which refinery, we're talking about with E10 fuel about one to three months and then it's basically bad. It's not completely bad, but it's not as combustible as before. And this is quite an issue. This is not an experiment I'm going to do on here. You can look at other channels that have done it. But basically they take aged gasoline and they try to light it with a match and they can't even do it. It will not light. And then they show brand new gasoline and it lights off right away. So that is what happens with stale fuel. And I experienced stale fuel in the XJS a couple months ago. This car has sort of, because of the pandemic, been off the road for a little bit and had a year and a half old fuel in it. And when I started it up, and I had ran it a couple times between that, it ran fine. But when I started up about a month ago, it was misfiring, not running on all cylinders, and just was not happy at all. And what I did was I filled up about 40 liters of fresh fuel in it. So I got a full tank of fresh fuel then basically mixed with the old stuff and I put in some fuel injector cleaner and I drove it and now it is back to normal and it's completely fine but that's basically just bad fuel not being able to combust correctly and of course the car is not going to run right so that is the other issue we're going to talk about a little bit later in this video after the experiment which we'll get to in a second you know what will this do to our collector cars that we don't drive as often the other thing I want to talk about with the, one more thing with corrosion is corrosion inside these carburetors especially if you have something you know like SUs or basically most carburetors are often made of quite a soft metal like aluminum or an aluminum sink or something so that means that they will corrode on the inside and especially if you have something like this which is you know a mid-60s carburetor where you still have a float you know maybe a brass things like that you will have you know dissimilar metals and if you have you know water in there and corrosion it will be really bad you will get you know that fine aluminum powder corrosion it will clog up your jets and everything else probably not as bad in an su car but if you have something not another classic like a solex or a zenith or something with different or webers you know with different jets and different things that will probably be an issue. You probably clog up those small little idle jets and your car just will not run right. But now let's get over to the bench and we'll do that experiment. And then we'll talk about in conclusion what I think is the best thing to do with ethanol fuel. Here we have two glass jars. And ideally, if you want to do this experiment, you need you know, graduated cylinders like you have back in chemistry in high school. Uh, I don't have those. so. These are the jars I could get a hold of that had you know, the straightest sort of edge and not you know, ripple so you can easily see it. It's not going to be perfectly accurate, but um, we'll keep that in mind. What I've done is, this is the gasoline from that jerry can I picked up yesterday. I believe it might still be E5 because I believe it's not until the 1st of August that we get an E5 here. And I think it's sometime in September over in the UK and some other countries. However, on that gas station, I saw the sticker that said E10 on the fuel yesterday. So maybe they've already changed or they just put up the stickers. I don't know. But you see the mark over here. That's just because I measured out 5 milliliters of fuel. Or no, sorry, 50 milliliters of fuel. So I'm going to put in 10% water to that. So that is 5 milliliters of water. So I am going to try and measure that up in here quite carefully. It's going to be a little bit on the tricky side, but maybe, let's see, maybe I'll, what I think I'll do, I'm going to empty this container out a little bit, make sure that it's just five milliliters in there, and that will just make it easier to pour in there. So put the lid back on. I'm going to measure that up. Be right back. We'll pour it in and we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is very close to five milliliters of water in there now, but I'm still going to measure it when pouring it in. All right, I am going to need just a tiny, tiny bit more. 
There we go. That is 55 milliliters in there now. We're going to put the lid back on. And if you can see, you can already see the water there in the bottom. So I'm going to seal this up and we're going to shake it and stir it. So it's all mixed up. You can see the water and fuel. Now I'm going to let it sit for about 15 minutes and the ethanol is going to soak up the water or the water is going to go to the ethanol and we should be able to see how much ethanol is in there because the water and ethanol mix is going to stay at the bottom and the gasoline on top and we can measure because we know I put in five milliliters of water we'll see how much that has gone up and then we know how much ethanol is in there so I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes and then we'll check this right back it's a little more than 15 minutes later, and I hope this can show up well on camera. But you can see, yes, it's still a little bit cloudy because there's probably some water suspended in there. But you have basically regular gasoline from about here to there. And there, I'd say, is water and ethanol mixed together. So I'm going to carefully try and measure that out. without disturbing it. And I hope you can see that is at the one centimeter mark or 10 millimeters. So in total, we had 50 milliliters before. I had five milliliters of water, which means if there was no ethanol in there, this would be at the five millimeter mark. It is not. Is at the 10 millimeter mark, which means there is 10% ethanol in here because we got five milliliters that it went up. So, yeah, 10% ethanol in E10 makes sense. But now we know for sure. And I hope you can see that sort of ripple effect. I hope that is showing up on camera there. You can see what the water actually looks like. So that experiment was a success. We definitely had 10% ethanol in that fuel, which makes sense because the little sticker was on there, but I didn't think that they were going to start selling 10% ethanol fuel here until August. So uh, a little strange, but I guess uh, that gas station was starting early. I don't know. This is just my small little local gas station in this very small little village I live in with about 1,500 people. So it's a very small gas station. Um, but anyways, so what does this mean? The one thing we did not touch about before is fuel hoses, but we've talked about that so much here on the channel before. It is extremely important that you have new fuel hoses on your car and that they're rated for ethanol. I like to use fuel hoses that are only made for fuel injection, only rated to even run 100% ethanol and you know our very very good name brand fuel hoses. That's the only thing I will use on my cars because I've learned my lesson. I used a non-brand fuel hose that was supposed to be okay with 4 ethanol on my XJ12 in the back and I didn't really think it was a big issue because it was the main hose going from the tank uh, over to the fuel pump and I was like there's no pressure in that it will be fine. It was not. After about two years or two and a half years I started seeing cracks in it and as we saw in the video about a year ago it was leaking. So check, check your hoses. And this is your own responsibility. Yes, you might say I get my car inspected every year, but they're probably not gonna you know, catch up on that. So always check your fuel hoses and sort of note down. I say about five years, that's it. You can run fuel hoses nowadays. Five years, then you need to replace them. And that is, in the long run, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than if your car you know, burns to the ground and a lot safer as well. Also be, be aware when we haven't, seen your car for a while, it's been sitting, just do a visual inspection of all the hoses, do a smell inspection as well, does it smell like gasoline? And if you smell the slightest bit of gasoline, investigate all your hoses. And other than that, you might be wondering, well, what can I do if I wanna avoid um, E10? And at the moment, I believe that the higher octane fuels here in Europe so in Europe, we use a different octane rating system in the US. I won't get into that at all. So our low octane is called 95 and our higher is 98, 99 or 100 or even you know, 101, 102 in some places. So the higher octane fuel 
it will still be E5, I think, in a lot of countries. I think in the UK as well, and here in Sweden also. So that is what I will be continue using. I've been using that in all my cars because they all require high octane fuel. But uh, I will probably continue to use that as well on small machines around the farm, such as lawnmowers and things, just to avoid as much ethanol as I can. The 95 or the lower octane fuel over here will now be E10 fuel like we just tested over here and uh, like we said there's quite a bit of ethanol in there there are fuel stabilizers out there on the market i haven't personally used them just because i'm not sure if i really believe in them it might be something i will try in the future but it just seems weird that they contain so much alcohol when i believe it's an ethanol sort of a type of alcohol so i'm treating a problem with the same problem or i don't know it just it doesn't really make sense to me However, some people do swear by them, but I've seen some experiments on other channels where they basically aged gasoline with stabilizer and, I mean, it might have helped a little bit, but definitely hasn't saved the day. Anyways, the, what will happen with our classic cars and ethanol, we don't really know. We can, of course, look over to the States where you guys have had this thing longer and learn from you guys on what to check out for. But I think the best thing is to not let cars sit. So if you're in a country like I live where we get, you know, severe winters and you don't want to drive your car in the winter, maybe you actually need to run it a bit in the winter to have the fuel circulating through, have the injectors clicking away, and just have, you know, not be old gas in the carburetors. And as soon as you get out on in springtime on the road, fill it up with brand new fuel, maybe even fill it up before you go out, get some jerry cans and fill it up to the brim so you at least have some fresh fuel in there to go with. Um, otherwise, I think we're probably going to sadly see more uh, classic car fires and other issues, you know, related to ethanol. So, um, it's it's not a good thing at all. Uh, definitely, it's not an improvement. Gasoline is going to be worse, but there's not anything we can do about it. So, the best thing we can do is stay safe, replace fuel hoses, replace fuel components, and make sure that all the replacements you put in are made to work with ethanol. Anyways, I'd love to hear what you guys think of ethanol fuel down in the comments. Uh, if you're over here in Europe and you, or you're worried for your classic car, if you uh, live in, over in the States where you guys have had this for a while, um, how is your experience with, with ethanol fuel, the higher ethanol content that we've had over here? So let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Anyways, until next time, I'm Adam and this was Loom with a Classic. I'll see you soon.